In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the kite. And a kite is not a parallelogram and it's not a trapezium or trapezoid either. So you can think of the kite as its own kind of family of shapes. The kite is going to have two important properties that you can use to distinguish it from the other types of shapes. So the first property of the kite is that both pairs of adjacent sides are equal. So what that means is that this side is equal in length to this side. These are adjacent sides. And this side is going to be equal in length to this side. These are also adjacent sides. So the pairs of adjacent sides will be equal in length. And I'll make a note of that right here. Pairs of adjacent sides are equal in length. And the second property of the kite family is that the diagonals of the kite are perpendicular. So if we put in our two diagonals here, that will be our first diagonal, and this is going to be our second diagonal. And in a kite, these diagonals are going to be perpendicular to one another, meaning we create four 90 degree angles here. So the diagonals are perpendicular. So these are the two properties that are going to describe the kite family. And if you look at these two properties, there are actually two other shapes that are going to fit these criteria. If we only need to satisfy these two criteria in order to make something part of the kite family, then the rhombus and the square can also be thought of as shapes that belong to the kite family, as well as belonging to the parallelogram family. And that's because if you think about the rhombus and the square, both the rhombus and the square had all sides of equal length. So of course their adjacent sides will be equal in length because all of their sides are equal in length. And we also saw that in the rhombus and the square, the diagonals bisected each other at 90 degrees. They were perpendicular to one another. So if these are the only two criteria we need to satisfy, the rhombus and the square will also satisfy this. So while the rhombus and the square can be thought of as part of the kite family, as well as the parallelogram family, the kite is not a parallelogram. And we know that because we can see that we do not have any parallel sides in our kite. So we cannot call it a parallelogram. The kite is going to be its own family. So how could we go about proving that in a kite, these diagonals are going to be perpendicular? Well, the first thing that we can do is break up our kite into two triangles. And what I'm going to start by doing is just labeling these points. Let's label this A, this B, this C, and this D. And we can label this intersection point as E. So if we start off by making a triangle that's composed of A, B, and C, that is going to look like this. So here we have A, here we have B, and here we have point C. And we know that this side is going to have this red value. We know that BC is going to have that blue value. Now if we were to compare this triangle to the triangle we can make with ADC, that triangle is going to look like this. If this side was still our side AC, so technically these are going to be the same side, I've just separated them so we can think of it as two triangles, but this side is the same as this side, it's just this long line here. So it's a common side between these two triangles. And here we have point D. And again, we're going to have this side having the red value and this side having the blue value. Now one thing that we can notice about these two triangles, which are just made up by cutting this kite in half into these two triangles here, what we can notice is that we have side, side, side congruency in these two triangles because we have this side AB, which is the same length as AD, we have BC, which is the same length as DC, and AC is a common side in both of our triangles, so of course it's going to be the same length because it's just the same side this side is present in each of our triangles. So by the side, side, side rule, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. And because these two triangles are congruent, we know that all of their corresponding sides and all of their corresponding angles are congruent. So that means that this angle here is going to be equal to this angle here. 
this angle B is going to be equal to this angle D and this angle down here is going to be equal to this angle over here. So if we look at our big kite over here, we know that angle C is going to be broken up into two equal parts. We have an angle here and we have an angle here. So it's going to be the same angle, just broken up into two parts by this purple diagonal. And we know that angle A is also broken up into two equal parts by this purple diagonal. So it's going to be broken up into two equal angles by this diagonal, just like C. And as it stands, this by itself doesn't really help us prove that our diagonals are perpendicular. But knowing this information allows us to construct another triangle using the information that we found out about our angles by knowing that these are congruent. So if we were to draw out another two triangles that are this time going to be triangles A, B, E and triangles A, D, E, that is these two smaller triangles at the top of our kite, we would get two triangles that look like this. Over here we have point A, over here is point B, over here is point D, and point E is at the bottom for both of these. So AE is again a common side. AE is just the same side, I've only broken it apart so we can see that we have two triangles we've created here, but this side AE is a common side between both of our triangles. So AE is going to have the same value of course. We know that AB has this red value and so does AD. And we know that this angle A is equal to this angle A. We know that this purple diagonal split up angle A into two equal angles. We can see this angle was equal to this angle. There were corresponding angles in our congruent triangles. So these two angles are going to be equal. And now what we can see is that these two triangles are congruent because of side angle side congruency. And what I'll just do to make it even more clear that this side AE is a common side, we can label it as uh, this. So we know that AE is a common side between our two triangles. And now we can see that we have this side which is equal between our two triangles. We have this angle and this side which is equal in our two triangles. So by the side angle side rule, we know that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE. And if these triangles are congruent, then that means that all of their corresponding sides and all of their corresponding angles are congruent. And the important thing that we get out of that is that we know that side BE is equal in length to side DE. So let's label this as just an X. We know that these sides are equal in length. So if we put that information into our kite here, we know that this side is equal in length to this side. And we also know that this angle in here is going to be equal to this angle. These are corresponding angles in our congruent triangles. So if this angle, let's say this is E1, is equal to this angle, which we can call E2, if E1 and E2 are equal, and we can see that if we put them together, E1, which is here, and E2, which is here, are falling on a straight line. And if we have angles on a straight line, we know that they have to sum to 180. And I'm just going to put in 3 and 4 here so we can talk about those later. But for now, we know that E1 and E2 are equal because these are corresponding angles in congruent triangles. And we know that E1 and E2 are supplementary. They are going to be adding to 180. So angle E1 is equal to angle E2 because they are corresponding angles. And we know that angle E1 plus angle E2 equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, angle E1 is equal to 90 degrees and angle E2 is also equal to 90 degrees. So we have shown that these are actually two right angles. Now using that same logic, we can prove that E3 and E4 are also going to be equal to one another. And since they are also on a straight line, we know that they are going to equal to 180. And the way that we can show that is if we now focus on triangle BEC, which is this triangle down here, and triangle DEC, which is this triangle over here, if we look at these two triangles, they are also going to satisfy side angle side congruency. 
Side BC is equal in length to side DC. Side CE is a common side, and we know that this angle is equal to this angle because of these two congruent triangles. So by the side angle side rule, we know that triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DCE, and that means that angle E3 has to be equal to angle E4, and that angle E3 plus angle E4 are going to be 180 degrees. So again, angle E3 is equal to 90 degrees, and angle E4 is also equal to 90 degrees. So what we have just proven is that each of these angles are going to form 90 degree angles, therefore the diagonals in a kite are perpendicular to one another.